Hi, and welcome to a special edition of NHL Wraparound. Vic Morn and Neil Smith with the trade deadline recap. And Neil, certainly the biggest news coming out of Vegas amongst a lot of big news on this deadline. Well, it sure is. And, you know, Vegas has been an aggressive team on the trade market, on the free agent market, on every market they could get their hands on. Ever since they came into the league, uh, very aggressive in the expansion draft. And then um, never really satisfied and always hungry to improve their team. It'll be interesting, Vic, to see if the future frowns on them for uh, using a lot of assets at this point in time. But there can be no doubt in Vegas Golden Knights fans' minds that they want to get a second straight Stanley Cup. And the acquisitions of Thomas Hurdle from San Jose, Anthony Mantha from Washington, Noah Hannafin from Calgary. And they also have three guys that will be coming off the injured list at some point in Mark Stone, Alec Martinez, and Brett Howden. Yeah, and, you know, the thing that's impressive about Kelly McCrimmon and George McPhee and the way they went about this is they really got, well, they got one big fish that I didn't even know was in the ocean. That's Thomas Hurdle. Yeah. Um, you know, helps that he was a shark. Um, and they got Anthony Mantha, who a lot of people wanted, a big, huge body. And Noah Hannafin was one of the most sought after players in the trade deadline market. So yeah. they they came out of this with three big pieces. And uh, the the pressure is on now to do the repeat. A team that uh, I think a lot of people people should be paying attention to is the Winnipeg Jets, and they certainly made a big move at the deadline as well. Tyler totally has got 26 goals this season. He's uh, had a really good year for Jersey. Uh, unfortunately for Jersey, they haven't had the goaltending that they you would need to make the playoffs in a, in a very crowded Eastern Conference, so... Uh, they're not going to make it. Tyler Toffoli's contract was up at the end of the year. I believe that Tom Fitzgerald tried to renegotiate that with him, uh, but it didn't seem to be able to be done. And so he moved him on to the Winnipeg Jets. And then, so that uh, Kevin Cheveldayoff, along with uh, Sean Monahan, who he brought in um, about 10 days to two weeks ago, um, you know, has fortified his offense with uh, Monahan, who's already got eight goals for them. And now he brings in Toffoli. And uh, they also picked up a little bit of depth on defense with Colin Miller as well. So uh, a little more depth in uh, in Winnipeg. Uh, let's move over to the Rockies in Colorado made uh, a handful of acquisitions to add to their depth. Yeah, they're supplementing their lineup, aren't they? they I mean, they're putting guys sure. onto the Colorado Avalanche that can support um, – the stars that they already have, the uh, Nikushkins, the Rantman, uh, obviously McKinnon, Makar. Uh, so they go out and get Scott Walker, who's a, a, you know him well. He's a good defenseman in, in Philadelphia. Um, yeah. They get a, a solid center iceman that can back up uh, McKinnon and the others, and Casey Middlestadt out of Buffalo. And then Trennan, a uh, left winger from Nashville, uh, Swan, a, a defenseman from Nashville, and uh, Brandon Duhane, uh, uh, another winger from Minnesota. You know what? You get a lot of injuries. To win 16 playoff games, you get a lot of injuries, and Colorado's just given themselves more depth. And I love the Trenton move in particular. I think it uh, really fits in well in a bottom six role and certainly augments the rest of that team. Uh, let's go over to the Edmonton Oilers, who uh, were not sitting pat uh, either with uh, three acquisitions of their own. Yeah, Enrim, Adam Henrique from the Anaheim Ducks was somebody that's been sitting out there all year as a player that at the deadline, Pat Verbeek would probably move because he's got playoff experience, he's got pedigree, he's got uh, good character. He hasn't been in the playoffs in a long, long time. I think it's been 12 years, but yeah. uh, there's no doubt that he can help a playoff team because he's a mature player. And he's been around for a long time, and he's been there and done that. Now, Sam Carrick also comes in from Anaheim uh, to help out. And uh, he, he is going to give them, again, uh, more depth at the center position. So uh, those two guys, along with uh, Stetcher from Arizona, and uh, I think Edmonton has fortified the team, Vic, as the season has gone on with the horrific start they had and then the coaching change and then Corey Perry comes in 
and now these trade deadline acquisitions. And the Vancouver Canucks quieted the deadline, although they did uh, acquire Nikita Z- 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 Zadorov. Uh, before the start of the new year, and then Elias Lindholm. Moving over to the East, major move by the Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah, they they won the Gensel uh, sweepstakes. Uh, Jake Gensel would turn down a contract offer from the Pittsburgh Penguins, and then, um, as I had said earlier in the week, they you know the general manager there, Kyle Dubas, had to either trade him or sign him. And if you can't get him signed, you must trade him. You can't let that asset go for nothing. And as it turns out, they moved him on to the Carolina Hurricanes. And I think the one thing that they are looking to do is to certainly uh, upseed the team that knocked him out in the conference finals last year, and that's the Florida Panthers. And they made a small move, but one with some meaning, uh, getting the f- former captain of the Buffalo Sabres, Kyle Poso. Yeah, and, and he fits right into this Florida team, in my opinion. Um, Barkov is a real good captain, and I really love the way he's been playing and leading for the Florida Panthers. Poso has been around a long, long time. He's a captain. He, he was a good captain for Buffalo. He likes uh, helping to groom young players. And there's no downside in having Kyle Poso in your dressing room. He's going to help the leadership. Uh, for Paul Maurice and for Barkov and and uh, Ekblom and uh, everybody else there, and um, I think he's a, he's just a real good move, a real big body, and and, um, and very experienced. Pat goes from Minnesota to Boston, and I'm sure that uh, Bruins play-by-play man Jack Edwards will be waiting at the airport to pick him up and perhaps test his body fat. Uh, a good depth move for the Bruins. Uh, what do you think there? Pat Maroon doesn't have a lot left, but he can crash and bang. He's a real big body who's won three Stanley Cups, one with St. Louis, two with Tampa Bay, knows how to go out there, knows how to aggravate people. And if you want to fight, he's more than willing to do that. Um, you know, you're, you're talking about a two-month acquisition here, and um, I don't think that there's any downside for the Boston Bruins or adding, uh, you know, more depth. And that's what I like when you add depth to a contending team. Uh, that they can overcome injuries. Uh, that's what depth does. And a three-time cup winner as well. But at the same time, uh, they're going to go into the playoffs with Charlie Coyle and Pavel Zaka as their one-two down the middle. That's not Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci. No, it sure is not. But they're not the contending team that they were last year when everybody said, okay, do we really need to watch the playoffs? Because we know who's going to win this. It's going to be Boston. <laughs> Uh, as it turns out, the Florida Panthers surprised them and came back from a three to one deficit and knocked them out in the first round. And that put the cup up for grabs and it ended up being yeah. Vegas's cup. But, um, you know, they're not they're not the powerhouse in the league this year that that belongs to the Florida Panthers or the Vancouver Canucks or somebody else who has a, a real sprint here at the end. Interesting depth moves by the New York Rangers, Alex Wenberg, Jack Roslovic, Chad uh, Ruedel, and uh, Nick Patan coming over. Uh, again, more periphery parts. Where do you see this resulting in for the Rangers in terms of their chance to advance? I just think it's more depth. Wenberg's a, a good centerman um, that comes in. I think they need to send down Edstrom and Rempe. Uh, they're not ready to play playoff hockey for sure. And uh, there's questions about Brodzinski, whether or not he can really be that centerman uh, on the third or fourth line or or they need somebody else. So uh, I think that Drury went out and got depth players, uh, players that you may not see put on the Ranger uniform much in the playoffs at all, um, aside from Winberg. Uh, But he wasn't able to land a bigger fish. And uh, he landed two big fish last year and got knocked out in the first round. So who knows this year? So maybe smaller fish this year will uh, have a better result for them. Just quickly on the Philadelphia Flyers, very interesting that they dealt Scott Walker to Colorado, but they were able to replace him with uh, Dennis Garyanoff, and he uh, comes over from Nashville in exchange for Wade Allison, but also a cup-winning defenseman from Buffalo. Yeah, big, big man, Eric Johnson, probably at the end of his career, been around a long time, first overall pick to St. Louis Blues a long time ago, won the Cup with Colorado in in uh, 22. I think he's played 88, 89 playoff games, yeah. so he knows his way around the rink during the playoffs. And you know what? Um, Philadelphia isn't 
definitely in the playoffs. So they need to uh, make sure that they get in first before they can use those 88 or 89 playoff games. But I think Eric Johnson gives them a better shot at uh, either ending up in third in the Metro or getting one of those wild card spots. Unique for Philadelphia being both sellers and buyers at the deadline. Quickly, Neil, uh, any teams that you're surprised were quiet at this deadline? There's two teams that I thought would do something. First of all, St. Louis Blues, Doug Armstrong, the general manager. There was talk about Wisniewicz. Uh, would he get moved? Uh, the Rangers get him back again. Uh, a lot of New York fans wanted him back there. Uh, he didn't move. And, and Doug really didn't do anything at the deadline. Um, the other team that I'm not surprised didn't do anything, but I'm surprised didn't do anything, <laughs> is the New York Islanders. Because... Um, you know, you would have thought they would have made a move one way or the other. They're right on that cusp of maybe getting a wild card spot, maybe missing the playoffs. It's not yeah. clear right now. Um, but I'm not surprised General Manager Lou Lamorello didn't do anything. He's somebody that likes to stay put and uh, play it out with the guys he's got. Last two deadlines in free agency last year as well. Um, can we finally say that uh, the era of dominance of the Pittsburgh Penguins is over with the assets that they have now unloaded? I think so. I think the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, are an anomaly. They, you can't figure them out. They've got, let's name them, Sidney Crosby, Eugenie Malkin, Clatang, Eric Carlson, Brian Rust, Rakar, uh, Rakar Raquel, um, others that are top players at other team playoffs certainly could do well in the playoffs and they're going to miss the playoffs again this year for the second year in a row. Um, they make this big splash with Eric Carlson. Uh, I know we both don't know why they did that early in the year. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and now here they are, they're going to be sitting on the outside looking in and they had to trade Gensel. So I, I wouldn't want to be in, uh, in that situation and be in Pittsburgh right now because there can be nothing but disappointment at this point. It's a lot of high-priced beef playing golf starting in the third week of April. Quickly, before we go, which two teams from the respective conferences set themselves best up to make the Stanley Cup final? I think Vancouver has done a real good job, and they did it early when they got Zadorov, and they got, and then they went back and they got Lindholm. Yep. Um, I'm not saying they're going to be in Lindholm, but I think that they fortified themselves as much as you could. I think Vegas obviously did some fortification there. And again, I'm going to remind everybody, you got to wait and see what the future happens because they, they those are big pieces. They, you got to have given up quite a bit of good future. And we know what they are, but we won't know what they are until they make those picks. Um, right. and, and, and on the other side, you know, uh, I think that the Tampa Bay tried to fortify their chances to stay in the wild card spot by getting another score in Duclair getting a veteran defenseman in Dumba. Um, Carolina, uh, I guess, did the best of just of grabbing the big fish and Jake Gensel. And, and if they can get Kuznetsov to come back to 70% of the player that he used to be, um, yeah. they'll really have improved their team. So uh, I can't wait for the playoffs to start and see where this all shakes out. I think the one thing that we can be sure of is that anybody – that advances to the conference uh, to the cup final through either conference is going to run some sort of gauntlet to get there because the teams are just so good they're so balanced and uh and just it's it's the hardest trophy to win and this is the perfect example why you're not, so you're i want to thank kidding. everybody what's that buddy i said you're not kidding it is the hardest trophy to win yeah, you know, indeed it is. So we just want to thank everybody for tuning in for this special trade deadline update. Um, join us again on Tuesday when we are joined by Mike Santos from Team 33, who will analyze the trade deadline a little bit further. He's got some interesting takes. He's going to run some programs for us and give us some real in-depth analysis on who these players are with their new teams, what kind of impact they're going to have, and some of the things he's going to say are going to surprise you. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on Tuesday. Thanks for joining us on the NHL Wraparound Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on all the NHL action.